Good morning. I am very pleased today to um, have an opportunity to talk with Dave Manoli, who is a new faculty member with McCourt joining us this fall. Um, Day, um, in his research, often uses administrative data and quasi-experimental methods as well as randomized experiments to answer critical policy questions, such as improving the take-up of the EITC or the role of information about education benefits on student outcomes. He works closely in this um, set of investigations with a number of government agencies, including the Treasury and um, Labor Departments, and he addresses questions of direct policy um, importance. Particularly impressive about Day's work is that he both has contributed to the academic literature and his work has already had measurable impact um, on real life experience um, of uh, people interacting with government agencies. So Day, we are thrilled to have you join us um, at McCourt. Um, welcome. Thank you very much. I am uh, equally excited to join the team at McCord. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm absolutely thrilled to be uh, to be working with the team. That's wonderful. Um, can you share a little bit more about your work and what inspired you to pursue this field of study? Sure. Um, so I've been working with the uh, with the IRS and uh, with Treasury for um, now over a decade, I guess, actually, and. Um, I think some of my interest really started uh, when I was a graduate student, uh, you know, thinking about uh, public finance. That was an area, I think, where, you know, I was generally interested in uh, government policy and the impacts uh, on individuals. Uh, but at the same time, I also wanted to uh, take care of some practical things like learning how to fill out my taxes. Uh, so a friend and I, um, in graduate school, we actually signed up to uh, participate in a program called uh, Volunteer Income Tax Assistance. Uh, through the United Way. Uh, so it's the uh, VITA, V-I-T-A is the program. And the United Way in the Bay Area hosts various uh, VITA sites and they uh, train individuals to fill out tax returns for uh, people that might be eligible for the earned income tax credit. And uh, then you spend the tax season uh, volunteering various blocks of time and uh, clients will come in and you fill out their tax returns with them. And I really learned a lot about uh, the practical side of tax uh, policy and tax administration, I think. Uh, seeing individuals uh, think about how they think about their tax refunds, how they uh, think about uh, you know, the tax filing process, uh, various difficulties that come up for them. Uh, it really, I think, you know, highlighted for me uh, a connection between uh, real world experience and what I was seeing in the classroom. And at the time, uh, my advisors, uh, Emmanuel Saez and Raj Chetty, were working on a project uh, teaching the tax code um, with H&R uh, Block. And I think those ideas kind of coalesced, uh, you know, in thinking about um, work also related to behavioral economics uh, that was going on um, uh, at the time, uh, to think about take-up issues. Uh, so benefit salience, um, you know, uh, complexity. Uh, things like that, I, I really kind of felt like I was starting to get real world experience on how people interact with uh, benefits, aliens, and complexity. And um, a year after I graduated, that's when we started talking with the IRS about some of these topics. And uh, we started our first project thinking about uh, how to improve benefit salients with various notices sent by the IRS, how to make notices simplified. And uh, that led to a variety of projects related to EITC take up. And, at the same time, you know, more recently, we've started to think about the other side, which is uh, EITC compliance, and uh, you know, thinking about how audits affect uh, individuals. Uh, so, if there are potential erroneous claims, or the IRS needs more information about claims, thinking about how that affects uh, individuals and how they can uh, navigate that process. So, I think it was just sort of a combination of my academic interests and uh, you know, just happening to have a great experience with the Vita program that I really learned a lot that led me to pursue this area, I think. That's a great story and a great example of how experience inside and outside the classroom can, can really shape um, your career in a lot of ways. Yeah, and I think, you know, I try to encourage my students uh, now when I, when I, you know, I teach a class on tax policy and tax administration and, and social policy, and I try to encourage them uh, to think either about the VITA program specifically, or uh, if they're interested in other areas, similar experiences, uh, just to get a sense of uh, interacting both with the classroom and the real world uh, to try to have ideas coalesce. I think uh, can, it can go a long way. Great advice. So you spent a lot of time working directly with government agencies. You spent time embedded essentially in government agencies. Um, what has that experience taught you and how will that influence um, your teaching at McCourt? 
Yeah, uh, so it's taught me a lot and I think it will greatly influence my, my teaching. It already has. So overall, I think it's really emphasized to me the importance of academic government partnerships. And so what I mean by that is that uh, there's really two key components uh, that, that I've learned about. So one is uh, the expertise that I can bring to the table, um, which I, I think is somewhat difficult for me to say. I don't often think of myself as bringing much expertise, but I can you know, bring insight into uh, you know, theories about human behavior from economic models or uh, methodological uh, insights or techniques you know, that I can uh, teach to people uh, within government and, and you know, analysts within government. But at the same time, I learn a lot from working really side by side with uh, co-authors at the IRS and Treasury, uh, learning about, you know, I think it gets classified broadly as institutional knowledge, but I can't tell you how much detail there is in that. Uh, you know, it's um, learning about like, you know, the day-to-day -day administration of a project uh, or a program, uh, thinking about uh, different, uh, you know, how data is collected, how data is processed, um, you know, how, various you know, uh, implementation elements go into place. Uh, and then it also involves a lot of communication. So uh, communication and patience are, I think, two broad areas so, uh, that I emphasize. So one is uh, you know, trying to listen to the institutional constraints that you're hearing. You know, so oftentimes, if you pitch a project, uh, the answer might not be the resounding enthusiastic yes you would hope for, but um, there might be a path to yes uh, if you hear people out on what their concerns are and you can figure out how to sincerely address the institutional constraints or concerns and then figure out what can be done. Uh, so you have to be open to adjusting ideas. And then at the same time, communicating results to uh, uh, individuals in, in government is uh, just highly important. Well, I can only imagine how that must enrich your classroom teaching, because I think people who have worked in government know that uh, theory in some sense is the easy part. It is the implementation and the complexity of the real world um, that can make things difficult, but also makes things very interesting. And that's really something that at McCourt in an interdisciplinary environment and in a professional school, that doesn't mean that things are kind of dumbed down. It means that we're embracing the much more complicated and messy world of actually getting things done, as opposed to just the simple things that you and I learned in graduate school in economics, where it's a very where it's an equation and you can maximize and you get a right answer. Um, and it, sometimes it, we wish that things were that easy. I, I completely agree. You know, I think that um, models are simplifications of reality. Uh, you know, for for various purposes. And uh, sometimes I think that we can get lost with that simplification or start to assume that reality uh, operates like the model as opposed to uh, the model reflecting a simplified version of reality. Uh, but so exactly, I, I think the multidisciplinary element is uh, really, really essential. You know, thinking about everything from, you know, theories or models to, uh, you know, behavioral economics, uh, you know, advertising and marketing comes into uh, some, into a lot of this uh, data science and econometrics, um, you know, I think that uh, all of this comes together uh, and it's you know, really the package that, that really is relevant for thinking about policy and, uh, and, and academic work, I think. So I think that's, it's been a great experience, I think, working very closely with, uh, within government and, and seeing all these different elements. That's true. Can you um, share some, you've had a very uh, a varied career and a very successful career. Can you share the best piece of career advice that you've received along the way? Uh, sure. So, um, well, first, I guess I should caveat this by saying, uh, you know, I still very much feel like I'm in the position of uh, listening for advice and, uh, you know, as opposed to giving advice. But, um, you know, so I, I think that one of the earliest pieces of advice that I got in uh, graduate school um, was, uh, was just thinking, uh, it boiled down to keep grinding, um, you know, so, you know, keep turning the wheel. And I think of that as just, you know, keep putting in the effort. And, uh, you know, at the time in graduate school, uh, unemployment was, you know, very much on my mind and uh, thinking about, you know, um, you know, like what positions might, you know, like be there in the future was, it was just so uncertain. Uh, now I think, you know, for people entering the labor market and, and in the labor market, that's even more heightened. Mm -hmm. uh, but the, that advice I thought, really highlighted what I can control and what I cannot control. And so I can keep working, um, you know, things that might not start off as I would like them, things might take a longer time than I would like, 
but if I'm putting in that effort, I know that that basis is covered. And then the other elements that are out of my control, I can just see how they evolve and then go from there. But, uh, you know, I know that, that there's a lot of psychology uh, that comes in, in with, you know, keep grinding. There's a lot of uh, feelings of, you know, doubt, discouragement, or things like that that can creep in. Uh, but uh, trying to keep the psychology on the sideline when you can and putting in the effort uh, can, can really go a long way. That's great and very timely advice um, as all of us and especially our students face such tremendous uncertainty in the current environment. And I think the, the set of kind of insights and um, experiences and tools and techniques that you bring to the school both in terms of um, developing solutions to the problems that we face and helping to train the impatient change makers and problem solvers at McCourt are just wonderful day. And we're so looking forward to having you join us this fall. Oh, that's very kind of you. And um, yeah, I, I really can't tell you how excited I am to, to join the team and uh, to work with everyone at McCourt. Uh, it's, it's really a wonderful opportunity. and. Uh, while I might be starting remotely, uh, I'm also very excited to interact in person down the road, but um, I'm really absolutely thrilled. Well, thank you. Well, thanks for taking the time to talk with me today. Thank you very much.